You may have noticed there are a lot of smart devices on the market for things like motion detection. A good portion of them are sensors like this one, the Shelly motion sensor I took apart in the last video. And they're good enough at their job for most applications. I use a few of them myself, but they lack a certain flair, a certain panache, a certain je ne sais quoi. What if your motion sensor did more than just notice when someone walked into a room? What if it could tell you how many people walked into the room? I think it's time to build a better motion sensor with smarter circuits. Welcome to Smarter Circuits. I'm your host, Ian Klein. If you watched the last video, you've already seen the sensors inside this module. It can sense motion, light levels, temperature, and tampering. I'm going to build a device that does most of this and more. I say most because there is one thing that will be absent from my build, the battery pack. A battery pack is pretty easy to make, but I don't need one, so I'll just do a current test on the device when I'm finished to determine how long it could last on the same battery pack as the Shelly. There's one more thing that wasn't really going to be a part of this device. The anti-tampering sensor to me is just a novelty. If someone is going to tamper with your sensor, two very important things are true. One, the sensor has probably already detected them if it's any good to begin with, and two, if they're tampering with the device, they probably don't care if you know they're tampering with it. When I wrote the first draft for this video, I thought I was going to be excluding the accelerometer. I had to buy a breakout board on short notice, and the only one that had the sensor I wanted also has an accelerometer. It's not the most important feature here, but I'll go ahead and add it since it's there. So let's get into the build. Hi, I'm interrupting myself to make a correction. I will not be adding the accelerometer. I shot a sequence involving this board, which I bought because of an issue involving an INA3221 chip I'll talk about later in the video. That bit would have been in here, but it went a little wrong. I thought I would be able to access the sensors on this board with the Pico because it's I2C communication. However, this board does a few special things with other pins. I just don't have time to reverse engineer each of those things. Also, the MicroPython library for some of these sensors would need to be written from scratch, and again, I just don't have time. I will be using this board at some point because I think it's really neat, but it will be in a different build and I'll be mounting it to a Raspberry Pi 0W. Anyway, back to the build. This is a passive infrared sensor I picked up on Amazon for about $2 a piece, in a pack of 10, link in the description. I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi Pico W for this because I want the Wi-Fi to replicate the smart sensor. I'll be setting this up to send MQTT messages for active and inactive alerts and other sensor readings, just like the Shelly. Connecting this sensor to any Raspberry Pi or other microcontroller is straightforward enough. It just requires anywhere from 2.7 to 12 volts DC and acts like a switch passing its input voltage to the output pin when motion is detected. I'm using the 3.3 volt pin from the Pico here and running the signal wire back to GPIO pin 21. I'm going to use this micro LED to show when the sensor has detected motion and I'll connect it to GPIO pin 2 in case I want to use the UART on pins 0 and 1 later. The Python script I have here simply checks GPIO pin 21 every tenth of a second. It stores the previous state and checks the current state. If they're the same, it doesn't do anything. If it's different, it calls a function to turn on or off the light and send an active or inactive message via MQTT over the Wi-Fi. If a message hasn't been sent for more than five minutes, the script will send out its environmental readings. I will make the Python scripts for this build available on the GitHub repo linked in the description. Okay. What we have here is a functionally comparable device to the Shelly motion sensor, at least the one. I haven't tested the two yet. It has comparable range and already collects more data more accurately. But what about power draw? At most, the module draws about 45 milliamps starting and connecting to Wi-Fi, about 65 with the LED lit up and sending an MQTT message, and seems to idle between 35 and 40 milliamps. So, if it was using its peak power all the time, it would use 2.6 kilowatts a year, which is roughly what the average digital clock uses in a month. That means at peak usage, a cheap 2500 milliamp hour 18650 can power this device for about 32 hours or so. There's some loss when you step the voltage up. The pack that's inside the Shelly would power this device for almost three times as long. The Shelly can beat this handily because of its ability to go into a low power state until movement or tampering is detected. So, Good on Shelly for that one. Before I go into the bonus round, I want to talk about this INA3221 current sensor for a moment. I talked in a previous build about incorporating this sensor into a smart device in a future build, but I didn't do that for two reasons. 
One, this little guy can't handle the current I wanted to illustrate, and this particular breakout board is wrongly wired, and it's a huge pain to get working, so I'm skipping it. I mention this because I tried to use this unit in conjunction with photoelectric sensors to do some tricks when I realized I didn't have a light meter handy, but the board was having none of it, so I decided to move on rather than get frustrated trying to get a novel idea to work. I decided this after I got frustrated trying to get a novel idea to work. I also want to take the obligatory moment to remind you that if you made it this far, please help the channel out by liking and subscribing if you haven't already. I'd really like to keep making these videos for you. Okay, bonus round. This is a brake beam sensor. You might be familiar with them. The most common place people have seen these is at the bottom of their garage doors to stop the door from coming down if something crosses underneath it. They're used for all kinds of things in the industrial world as well, including safety curtains on machinery that could grab you and pull you in if you stick an appendage somewhere you shouldn't. I did a video on these very early in the life of the channel, and I'll go over that same idea in a moment. The way these work is simple. This receiver unit sends voltage through its signal wire, much the same as the motion sensor, whenever there is infrared light being detected. This unit is just an infrared LED. If you put the LED on one side of a space and the receiver on the other, you have an invisible tripwire of sorts. If you block the infrared light from coming from the LED, the receiver drops the signal wire low, and you know the beam has been broken by something. There are a lot of ways you can use this device, but the one I'm going to talk about is a little different. If you have two of these, you can not only tell when an object passes in front of them, you can tell what direction it's moving. A simple way to illustrate this is if I count 1, 2, you know I'm counting up. If I count 2, 1, you know I'm counting down. Take this logic and apply it to a doorway with two beams, and now you know if beam 1 is blocked, then 2, something moved in through the door. If beam 2 is blocked, then 1, something moved out through the door. I'm going to implement this in my motion module, but I'm going to do it without the LEDs. I'll use this much brighter infrared laser to cast a dot on a surface nowhere in the line of sight of the receivers instead. Now, the beam is broken, but if I pass an object in front of it, the scattered reflection of the laser beam makes the receiver think the beam is back. So I've reversed the logic of the beam being broken, but I don't need the transmitter anymore, so I can package this device in one case. Here is the device installed in the doorway between my kitchen and living room. With one between the kitchen and dining room, I now know without any shadow of doubt how many people have walked into or out of the kitchen. The height of the sensor can be altered to account for kids, but I don't want kids in the kitchen without adults, and I also don't want my system to start turning the lights on for my bulldog. There are a few different ways to do what this does, but this is pretty quick, cheap, and effective. I'm also working on a pair of devices that will send out beams in a fan pattern every 9 degrees from two corners to create this weird looking grid. The devices would simply need to know how far they are from each other, and as long as they're lined up on a straight wall, they can tell the exact location of a person in the room by comparing the angles of the beams broken. If you're worried about two people being too close together in an orientation that would make them appear as one, you could add a third here to create redundancy, but really it's not necessary as long as the people separate long enough for the device to know there are two people or no one has moved to the door. Ultimately, if there's anything blocking the beams, you can be sure there's someone there anyway. I'll keep working on that device and probably do another build video much later. In the next video, I'm going to talk about automation techniques and what constitutes automation in the first place. Automation is often much simpler than we make it, and I can show you techniques from as early as 1910 that are still as effective and life-improving as anything else Amazon could sell you. So make sure you join me for that. If there's something you think I didn't cover in enough detail, a topic you'd like me to cover, or you just want to say hi, let me know in the comments. I want to give you more of what you like, but I have to know what that is first. I'm trying to bring more interesting devices to explain and build, but I need your support. Please, if you like what I'm doing here and it's within your means, consider becoming a patron or donating to the fundraiser to upgrade the studio and get more gadgets. I am working on membership rewards and I will be putting all unedited builds up for my patrons interested in seeing the tedium, as well as detailed plans and instructions for everything I do here. I appreciate every viewer for making this channel possible. Every view encourages me to get better and do more, so thank you for being here with me. I do hope you enjoyed the video, and of course if you did enjoy it and haven't already done so, please do subscribe to the channel. If you want to know what's going on between episodes, you can follow Smarter Circuits on Twitter at Circuit Smarter or on Facebook. And if you'd like to help make more and better videos possible, consider becoming a patron on our Patreon page linked below. Thanks for listening to me ramble, and I do hope you'll join me for future videos as I continue building Smarter Circuits.